Item Number SCP-1827 Object Class Euclid Special Containment Procedures Due to its immovable nature, Dimensional Site-55 has been built surrounding SCP-1827. SCP-1827 is to be housed within a 50m by 50m by 50m Class III Dimensional Containment Chamber. Instances of SCP-1827-2 are to be recovered for study and subsequently contained. Items retrieved from instances of SCP-1827-2 are to be contained in a low-value anomalous item storage. SCP-1827 is a Type 5 space-time anomaly leading to a partially explored parallel universe, hereby referred to as SCP-1827-1. SCP-1827 extends in three dimensions and constantly emits a bright pink light. SCP-1827 is approximately 2 meters in height, and is suspended 45 centimeters above the ground. SCP-1827 appears to be vaguely shaped as an avian figure. However, in photographic and video records, SCP-1827 appears as an amorphous pink mass. SCP-1827 is inaccessible to most living beings. However, specimens of wild turkey, Meliagris gallopavo, are able to access SCP-1827 if placed within instances of SCP-1827-2. Monthly, SCP-1827 will undergo an expansion event. During this event, SCP-1827 will drastically increase in size, varying from 15 to 40 meters. Once the expansion event has concluded, an instance of SCP-1827-2 will emerge from a random point of SCP-1827. This process usually takes from 30 minutes to 5 hours. Once the instance of SCP-1827-2 has completely emerged, SCP-1827 will slowly revert to its initial size. SCP-1827-2 instances are generally ovoid or rhomboidal metallic objects of different size, varying to 12 meters to 30 meters. All instances of SCP-1827-2 contain three or more metallic boxes. These boxes contain items of different nature all relating to what is supposed to be either a civilization based or organized exclusively on or by turkeys. If placed within 2 meters of SCP-1827, instances of SCP-1827-2 will autonomously proceed to re-enter SCP-1827. So far, the Foundation has contained instances of SCP-1827-2 with exactly items recovered. The following list contains the most notable items recovered. For a full list, please read document 1827-15-OP. One copper plate copy of the Pioneer plaque. The figures of the man and the woman have been replaced by the stylized figures of a male and female specimen of Meliagris Galapavo. Fifteen phonograph records playing traditional Turkish songs. Each record contains fifty tracks. The actual lyrics of the songs have been replaced by avian sounds. Twenty copies of the Journal of a Hitler Soldier, an epistolary novel depicting a love story between a soldier and the daughter of a merchant, using a war between the turkeys and the herons as background. A note on the cover claims the novel to be based on true events. Fifty-four Polaroid photographs depicting large specimens of Meliagris Galapavo wearing traditional Turkish clothes. No sign of alteration is present. 120 Polaroid photographs depicting large specimens of Meliagris Galapavo accomplishing different tasks, such as plowing a cornfield or assembling instances of SCP-1827-2. No sign of alteration is present. SCP-1827-3 is an entity referring to itself as the Great Turkey. SCP-1827-3 appears to be either the leader or the harbinger of a Hindler civilization, despite the fact it has never referred to itself or other individuals as such. SCP-1827-3 communicates using inscribed steel plates, contained within larger instances of SCP-1827-2. All the messages are written in Turkish. SCP-1827-3 has so far communicated with the Foundation on only two different occasions. 
SCP-1827-3 does not appear to be interested in making contact with humankind, nor does it appear to be aware of it. Addendum 1827-1 Document 1827-02-LT On 2003, an instance of SCP-1827-2 measuring 42 meters emerged from SCP-1827. The instance contained a 20cm by 20cm by 20cm steel plate, with the following message inscribed on it in an ancient Turkish dialect. This is the first message from SCP-1827-3 ever contained. The following is a rough translation from ancient Turkish. This is the Great Turkey, speaking in the tongue of the ancestors. Eons ago, our race left this planet for Hindler, as the tyranny of the Herons took over after we ruled for decades. Despite all this, some of our brothers decided to remain, for they were afraid of change. To this day, after we finally had the courage to open the gate, we started to share our culture and ourselves, in hope for the cruelty of the herons to be over at last. As many feathers have fallen from the last fly, I am aware that most of you now have families and friendships on this world, but we beg all of you to join us on Hindler, where we may find happiness together. Addendum 1827-2 Document 1827-09-SW On 2003, a white instance of SCP-1827-2, referred as SCP-1827-2A, measuring 12 meters emerged from SCP-1827. SCP-1827-2A only contained a wooden henhouse and a small steel plate with the following message written in modern Turkish. This is the Great Turkey speaking. Please insert Turkey here. Addendum 1827-3 Expedition 1827-I Following the events depicted in Addendum 1827-2, a male and a female specimen of Meleagris Galapavo, nicknamed by the personnel Mr. Gobbles and Lady Bobble, were placed within SCP-1827-2A, and sent through SCP-1827 during an expansion event without accident. A small camera was mounted on Mr. Gobble's neck. After 12 minutes and 36 seconds, SCP-1827-2A opened. The camera briefly recorded several large avian-like creatures, similar in appearance to Grey Herons, Ardea's scenario before abruptly terminating as the said creatures proceeded to supposedly kill and devour Mr. Gobbles. The other turkey's fate is unknown. What appeared to be a city was visible in the background. Addendum 1827-4 Document 1827-17-RF On 2004, SCP-1827-2A emerged from SCP-1827. SCP-1827-2A was visibly damaged and contained a short note written in English. We are fine. The Herons are no longer a problem now. Hendler is real. Instances of SCP-1827-2 have since stopped the merger from SCP-1827. SCP-1827 is slowly decreasing in size with a rate of 